Hi, I'm Dr. Colin Buchanan at Coeur d'Alene Spine and Brain. I want to talk to you today about spine surgery infections and what we can do to prevent those infections. Generally, the risk of a spine surgery infection ranges anywhere from 1 to 8 percent, and that rate really depends on several factors. Uh, there are patient specific factors uh, such as uh, diabetes, uh, use of medications like corticosteroids, smoking, nutritional status, and age. And there are also surgery specific factors, factors such as the duration of the surgery, uh, the complexity of the surgery, and whether we're implanting any hardware during surgery. Today I'm going to focus on the patient factors associated with the spine surgery infection that are modifiable. And those factors include diabetes, corticosteroid use, and smoking. Diabetes plays into infection uh, in patients who have blood glucose that isn't very well controlled. And there are many studies that show that with poorly controlled blood glucose or blood sugar, patients tend to have a much higher infection rate after surgery. So it's very important that we have a good medication regimen to help control the diabetes before surgery and during and after the surgery to help minimize the risk of infection. To some extent, corticosteroid use can be eliminated in patients uh, who are undergoing spine surgery uh, in whom that medication isn't required to control uh, long-term uh, chronic disease. So if those patients are taking corticosteroids for pain associated with their spine problem, it's best to have those medications weaned off. Corticosteroids tend to decrease wound healing and thereby increase the infection rate. Smoking is probably one of the most important modifiable risk factors associated with an increased risk of spine surgery infections. If we can get patients to stop smoking, and this includes complete nicotine cessation, the risk of spine surgery infection will go down significantly. Several things such as nicotine patches and e-cigarettes are helpful for patients to stop smoking, but in reality they don't decrease the infection rate because patients are still receiving the nicotine. So again, it has to be complete nicotine cessation. Patients are encouraged to talk to their primary medical doctors about medications such as Chantix or Wellbutrin that can help patients in controlling the cravings associated with smoking cessation. In summary, we talked today about spine surgery infections and what factors are associated with an increased risk of infection. We're very fortunate that here at CDA Spine we have a low infection rate, but there are certainly steps we can take to help decrease that rate even more. These modifiable patient factors such as smoking can make a significant impact on lowering the infection rate if we can address these with patients before surgery. I'm Dr. Colin Buchanan. Thanks for watching.